even now. The chief blessing for the biblical people was freedom. To not food, freedom. Not status, freedom. When God frees the people, that's the chief blessing. The Bible says, and God said, we thank God for putting his mighty hand in delivering us from slavery. When I was a little boy, the big hero was Jack Robinson. Before that was the NBA, before that was the NFL, it was baseball. Jack Robinson came into white baseball. I say white baseball because it was, so that were three leagues, four leagues, so that were four leagues, African-American leagues, called Negro leagues, white leagues, called major leagues, Latin American leagues, in Japanese leagues, they were white, black, Latino, and Japanese. So when we join, see so when we join the white league, we didn't know how good baseball could be until everybody could play. We didn't come to the Dodgers to learn how to play baseball. We, we, we came starting. We had Jack Robinson, Don Lucas, and Campanella, three black players. We figured we could win it, and, but we would lose to the Yankees every year. That's six games, one or four games or three or something. 1955, we thought we could beat the Yankees because we had Sandy Koufax and Drysdale. In the four-game series, Yankees couldn't beat two of them. But on the day of the big game, this is the Super Bowl game. Kopex wouldn't pitch. So what's wrong with you? So that's that's your know, Kippur day. I can't play baseball on that day. That's the day the Lord delivered us. Said so no ball game, no thing, no money, no private joy is greater than I promise to God and I thanks to God for delivering us from slavery. Our deliverance tends to mean, see, our deliverance tends to mean ham marks and greens on January 1st and a ball game. But God delivered, said that God delivering us from slavery is a big, that's the Super Bowl of freedom. How many of you knew your grandparents? Raise your hand. Knew your grandparents? Raise your hand. Your great grandparents raise your hand. Great great. Great great great. You kind of laugh because you don't. They are blur. In the first book of Matthew, David to Jesus what said forty two generations. Jesus knew forty two generations. We stop at five. So Jesus quotes David, he's for the second degree, his lineage. Moses, 2,000 years older than David. So Jesus talked to Moses like he's his granddaddy, and Moses, Joseph was his dad. Now I want to talk to me now. First slave is a kind of blur. See, if I do not know, what the Lord delivered me from, I don't know how to thank him. Say, thanking God for a new car, a new suit, and a trip ain't quite like thanking God for freedom from slavery.
1619, we were brought here in shackles. Not the freedom, but the shackles. He was out on identity. And the worst thing they did was they erased our memory. They erased our memory. When I was a little younger, Grandma would be in there humming. And I didn't know why she was humming. She, she was not a songstress. She'd just be humming. She said, sounds like a language they can understand. She'd just be, mm -hmm. No organ, no piano, no riffs. Just be humming. I know she could think, though she'd act like she was a scholar. She, she could count like she'd be making bridge. Count X amount of grains of salt, X amount of grains of sugar, a little flour. Like she was counting grains. She had to be a mathematician because it always come out just fine. <laughs> and that's why she would shout without, say, Grandma could shout without organ. Say, if I think, if I think, about the goodness of God, I can thank God for His goodness. But if I can't think, I can't think. If I can't think, I can't shout. Many of us got PhDs in irrelevances and trivialities. She could think about how she had come out of slavery. See, if you can think, See, if you can think about God, really think, you really think. Let me put this another way. Someone turn the fan off, please. Turn the air off, please. Now, this is not a shouting sermon, Melvin. Because it seems to me that I believe in good gravy. Says shouting is not gravy. Shouting is overflow. Shouting is not good gravy. But unless good gravy has a meat base, it's just greasy water. Say gravy must have a meat base or it's just greasy water. So, so I'm trying to let a little meat base in. When the Constitution was written in 1776, we had been here 157 years already. So we were here before the Constitution. The Declaration of Independence was written in 1789, so we had been here 12 years before then. So we were here. We're not at the bottom of the nation, we're at the foundation. Now y'all have a different. See, the bottom is where you end up. Foundation is where you start from. In other words, if you had a little condominium and you moved on the 35th floor and a stiff wind blew the roof off, you would be upset because the roof fell off. But folk on the other floors, they wouldn't be upset. But if there was a Katrina at the bottom, everything would be shook up. See, when the foundation shakes, everything shakes. We're not the bottom. We are the foundation. That's why we're the issue. The biggest discussion in 1789 was what she would do with them. What she would do with them who are driven our in this cotton to the top of the world. What she would do with them? So Africa provided three things. Take notes. So Africa provided three things. The shipping industry for 250 years. It provided resources from Africa and cheap labor from Africans. So our four parents are not slaves, they're our ancestors. They're slaves to conqueror. But my great 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 grandmama is not slave, but she's my great great grandma. Say my great 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 grandmama. 
is my great great grandmama. She's not my slave. So I should never again refer to her as slave. You want to me a minute? The king was cotton. The South wanted to break off and form a whole new nation of cottoning us as labor and shipping clerks. So the shipping clerks founded Harvard, Princeton, Yale, and Columbia in Georgetown. That's what's coming out now in breaking out in news today, breaking news. And then they went a step further. So when we establish our, our, our preeminence, as cultivating cotton, we became valuable. But more valuable to our oppressors than to ourselves. See, if today, if today, we've gone from picking cotton balls to picking footballs and basketballs and don't own our services, we just shift and pick it. Thirty-two NFL football teams, right? We own none. Thirty-two basketball teams, we own none. Basketball teams, we own one. So picking cotton was not so bad. If we could own the seeds, get the government subsidy, and turn cotton in the textile, textile in the clothes, and ship them. We could only pick it. We couldn't develop. So picking footballs and basketball ain't bad. If we can't own it, nothing's changed but the product. <clears throat> Slavery. Illegal to learn to read or write. Slave master got caught raping one of our women. She was his comfort zone. She was his experiment. The husband, or the, the man, she couldn't have a husband. Said marriages and family was illegal. So if he had sex with his daughter or with his wife, he could do nothing about it. There was not one rape technically in slavery. To beat a man, it was his property. So if they beat the man, they could not protest his property. So you end up with one family with four children, two of them very dark and two of them very light skinned. Look, look around our complexions in this room. We do not look like Nigerians. Like we're from Benin. We look like we're landing in New Orleans. <laughs> so our hair is different. Our skin color is different. So we are a people not based on color, but culture and relationships. So you say, it's all right, so a dark skinned Negro, married, light skinned lady, and vice versa, because we, so we are a people not based upon complexion based on culture. Jack and I have five children. All seven of us are different colors. And, and, and no one, it, it doesn't affect anybody. See, nobody in the house is affected. Seven people in the same house, all different complexions. That's the lineage of slavery. You black men to have sex with black women. To make other little slaves. If they were sick, throw them away. If they were strong, put them to work. Or sell them. You make a boy and they sell your son. You can do nothing about it. You had no, no right in court. So strong boys pick cotton or sold to the, to the neighbor plantation. Remember Strom Thurmond some years ago, this lady, Miss Washington, went to South Carolina State. She was Strom Thurmond's daughter. They finally put her name on the statue in South Carolina a few years ago. Say, say, say young black girls were comfort zones and experiment 
for slave masters. So me and Tusha started a long time ago. See, in slavery, we could not get a wage illegal to get money for work. Had no health care. We got sick. We died. My grandmother, Brother Sam, my grandma, didn't have, a, didn't have a birth certificate because she was the last of 13 children. She was sickly. They thought she wouldn't live. She didn't deserve to live. So she, 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 she hopped along to share my mom at 13. I'm discussing the erased, say slavery, erased our memory. Now, just that's too far back. Say every, every cell of one of our ancestors is downtown in the records in New Orleans. So I'm because on every ship, the, the government taxed the ship and the cargo. Every ship that landed, the product got taxed. You got taxed according to how many products were on your plantation. So if they knew how many of us left West Africa, how many got thrown in the ocean, how many landed in New Orleans, how many went to the sugar plantation, how many went to the cotton plantation. Talk to me, somebody. I want y'all to hear me. I, I know this ain't shout material. I just want y'all to bear with me for a minute. I'll, I'll, I'll let y'all let y'all go and watch the Pelicans or something after a while, but I got I got y'all trapped right now for a minute. So the records that we say we don't know our past, but those who conquered us, those who got free land from the government and tax subsidy from the government and paid taxes to the government, they know. That's, that's, a, that's a scripture that's kind of sad, 137 Psalm, saying we went by the rivers of say we went by the rivers of Babylon, and then we wept when we remembered Zion. Said so we're worse off. We don't remember Zion. We, we, we don't remember five generations deep. So that, there's there's no there's no there there. There's just a there's just, just a blur. There's just a, a dark spot back there. So some people call say our great 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 grandparents are not our slaves. Without them, it would not be us. They are our ancestors, our parents, not our slaves. That leads into say everything fundamental to America is based upon slave trade. This is black history, we're gonna sell it the same today. The South's gonna break away. Lincoln said, "I tell you what, if, if, if you don't come back in a hundred days, I'll, 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 I'll take away your, I'll take away your slaves. I'll take away your economy." See, our people were the, the backbone of the Confederate Army because we were cooking while they were working, and we were crops while they were fighting. So Lincoln said, "I'll free them." It was the biggest single blow to the slave system. Lincoln said, in a hundred days, if you don't, if you don't bring them back, I will uh, free them. Say, Master, the hell if that's true. Say, first, we'll, we'll kill him. He said, slavery's not going to end. Say, we've had slavery 243 years. It ain't going to end on no one morning. This, is, this was a fight going on. Our people have been waiting to hear a president with a full military authority give the order to free us. After all, we were enslaved by the government. So the government protected slave owners. We all bear with me this minute. Christmas meant nothing to our people because A, you couldn't shop, you had no money. No layaway, no credit card. So you couldn't leave the plantation. So, see, the big deal for us was December 31st. 
Lincoln said, tomorrow, right, if they are not reconciled, I will free you. The first watch night service was December 31st, 1862. Said, be watched. What, what good guys come to church and, and pray the next year and bad guys have a private party? Say, be watched. Thank you, thank you, thank you for tuning in today. Uh, I know that that word uh, has affected change in the lives of so many people watching today. That's our aim, that's our desire. Not to impress you, but to improve you by the imparting of God's word. Listen, uh, if you're watching today and you're in need of prayer, I want you to sit down and call the number at the bottom of your screen. There are counselors who are sitting, waiting to pray for you and waiting to pray with you and usher you into the things of God. Uh, there may be someone today who is unsaved. Maybe you're in need of salvation. I want to pray with you today. I want to pray that God will come into your heart and come into your life and that from this moment on, your life will not be the same. Will you pray with me? Close your eyes. Repeat after me. Father God, come into my heart. Take over my life. I surrender my life to you. I surrender my members to you. I ask you now, God, to forgive me of my sins. Wash me. Cleanse me. Make me whole and holy. And I thank you now that from the top of my head to the soles of my feet, I am saved. I am saved. I am saved. My brother, my sister, if you prayed that prayer with me, let me tell you, from the top of your head to the soles of your feet, you're saved, you're saved, you're saved. Now what you need is a good church to help affect change in your life. And let me tell you, one single service at New Home Ministries will change your life forever. I want to see you Sunday morning. I want to see you in Baton Rouge at 8 o'clock, 3000 Tecumseh Street. 1030, I want to see you in New Orleans at 1616 Robert C. Blake Sr. Drive. I promise you. If you come one time, you will come back again. I love you. Thank God for you. And until next time, if I don't see you here on the air, if Jesus comes back, I'll see you in the air. Bless your spirit. We believe that all children deserve a bright future and the opportunity to pursue higher education. That's what my husband believed. His beliefs and his legacy have become the mission for the Robert C. Blake Senior Scholarship Foundation. The R.C. Blake Sr. Scholarship Fund was founded in honor of my father, Bishop Robert C. Blake Sr., to provide opportunities for young people who have the desire to excel and the potential to succeed. As a family, we are encouraging every high school senior that's intending on going to college to visit rcblakesscholar.com to apply and to get more information. My husband loved and believed in you. And so do we. Life Television Network, Chickasaw, Mobile, Bridger. We are the Gulf Coast hit music station. the broadcast today. I'm Pastor Dexter Easley of New Life Christian Fellowship Church and I'm always excited to bring the message to you because I truly believe that you grow after hearing the Word of God. Today I'm going to be talking about living the abundant life. 
You know, many times people ask me, how do you live this abundant life? And how can I live at a place where it talks about in John 10 and 10 that the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but Jesus Christ came to give life and that life more abundantly. Well, today I'm going to be talking about it must start in your heart. This is called the heart test. You know, in our lives, we will be tested different ways. You know, I went to the doctor recently, and they wanted to do a physical on me. And, of course, they did a full physical, and they checked my heart. They made sure it was pumping right, make sure I was there was no clog in my arteries or anything like that, that I was doing well. And I believe truly that the, our hearts need to be tested, not our physical heart, I'm talking about our spiritual heart. Where is our motivation coming from? And so today I'm going to be talking about the heart test. You're really going to enjoy it. And I would encourage you to get your pad, uh, of course, get your Bible out, and get your pen. Follow along with me as I share the heart test. I'll be right back. Well, if you turn your Bibles over to Malachi chapter 3 and verse 6, we'll start there. The title of the lesson, if you're taking notes, is the heart test, the heart test. You know, the other day I went for, uh, of course, a, a, a checkup, and I was doing my yearly checkup, and, of course, they began to do some different tests on me because I'm of a certain age, and so uh, they want to do a certain test, amen. At a certain age, you get a certain age, you want to do other tests than just go in there, open your mouth, ah, and all that kind of stuff. They want to do some other things. So in, in the process of that, they told me, that, of course, we want to check out your heart. We want to make sure your heart is functioning the way it needs to function. So they began to talk about different type of machines, and many of us know about the EKG machine that they hook you up to, and then they find out how the rhythm of your heart is working and things like that. But what the doctors were doing was testing how well my heart functioned and how well it was able to handle stress or any other pressure that's placed on it. Now, today we're talking about the heart test, and the heart test is really the test of honor. Let's look at Malachi chapter 3 there, and then we'll get started, and then hopefully by the end of the lesson, you'll see where we're going with this. Malachi chapter 3, verse 6. Are you there, class? Ready? Now read. For I am the Lord, and I do not change. For I am the Lord, and what? I do not change. Therefore, you are not consumed, O son of Jacob. Now, let's go and talk a, a really briefly for a moment. The book of Malachi, what we're reading out of, a lot of times when people hear the book of Malachi, they say, oh, I know you're going to talk about tithes and offering today. Why? Because it's, most, it's one of the most books that people go to, unrealizing that the book of Malachi has three different value points. Number one is family. Okay. Number two, or oh, well, faith, family, and finances. Okay. Those are the three areas that it takes. It says, it, oh, there you go. It's a, Malachi is a book about returning to God in our what? Faith, family, and finances. All right. So now that's what the book of Malachi is all about. A lot of people say, well, that's the Old Testament. And that's true. But truthfully, if you look at the book of Malachi, the book of Malachi is nothing but 15 verses away from the New Testament. Matter of fact, if you read Malachi, you'll understand that Malachi is talking about the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Got it? Now, now, let's keep going. The reason why that's important is because a lot of times when people read the book of Malachi, they assume that because it's in Malachi and it's Old Testament, that it does not apply to us today. So let's go ahead and clear this up right now. The first thing is, tithe came before the law. Say that with me. Tithe came before the law. Tithe is in the law. And time is after the law. Now let's do it one more time. We got halfway people there. Number one, time before the law. Time is and time is after the law. Okay. So now all these areas time is. So when you hear somebody say, "Well, time is in the Old Testament," you can let them know, no, no, no. There was timing before the. Uh, the, 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 um, the law. There was tithing before law, and then they were doing the law. There was tithing in the law. Can I get an amen? Amen. amen. See, now, so now look at this now real quickly. Look at this. Over in Malachi chapter 3, verse 8, it says, Will a man rob God, but yet you have robbed me? But you say, In what way have we robbed you? In what? Tithe and in offering. And so you hear people say, Well, you know, it's behind, you know, Pastor, I'm just tired of people talking about, you know, listen for a moment. Now, Listen, they're fussing over, over tithe. Okay, so many of you have a slip of paper, right? Hold up your paper, everybody. Hold up in the air. Show me like you really do care. All right. Now, there'll be some people that won't participate, and I know why you won't participate, because you don't want to tell the truth. And that's okay. People lie everywhere. That's quiet, right? That kind of in your face, and it kind of, I don't mean to harm by that. No, 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 I don't mean to harm. But, you know, people don't do it. Yeah, I, 
because they don't want they don't want truth. So, okay, with that piece of paper, what I want you to do, I want you just to think, how many people in here get paid once a week? Okay. How many get pe people in here get paid every other week? How many people in here get paid once a month? Okay. How many people in here don't get paid at all? Now, I just saw my wife have a hand up, right? Did y'all see that? Y'all saw that, did She don't get paid at all. All it is is she don't get paid. Come on now. You got the prize, baby. You don't need the Cracker Jack box. You got the prize in the Cracker Jack box. Amen. Don't get paid. You get paid. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So, now, each one of us get paid or not get paid. Those that don't get paid, we're going to believe God that you start, you get a job and you make plenty of money. Amen. Now, uh, but, but those that get paid once a week, I want you to put down the amount of time. If you get paid every other week, I want you to put down your amount of time. If you get paid once a month, I want you to put down your time. Write it on that piece of paper. Now, be careful now because people try to look over your shoulder. So just hide it. Just kind of write it there. Now, you don't have to worry about it. It's not going to come back to me. I don't want it. I'm not interested in having it. It's not. This is only for an example that we'll be able to walk through this to together. Amen. I would like everyone to participate. If you do not participate, I understand why. It's okay. I can't make you do that. But I want you to do that because it will help you understand about tithing. Thing. Amen. Once you do that, once you hide it and you write it down, okay, there you go. Hide it. Okay, you've seen it. Now you got to be able to look at it. Open it up and look at it. Amen. Amen. Now, if your husband and wife, y'all are tithing together, you can do that together. That's all fine. Just, but I want you to look at it. Okay. All right. Now, <clears throat> that, look, that, that, that amount, whether it's little, little or big, that amount, God set up tenth. Now, watch this now. God set up a tenth. A tenth, because it can be even and right for everybody. Got it? So nobody can say, well, one person pays more and one person pays less. There will be people giving more tithe than others primarily because of the income. Are y'all with me so far? So, so it will vary from each one. So now when you say tithe, tithe, tithe is a 10% of your income. Now, anybody got any questions? Nobody have any questions? We had a lot of questions at the 8 o'clock service. You guys are a good crowd. Yes, ma'am. That's it. That's the question. That's it. That's the one I'm waiting on. It, is it now? And, and, and Lady Lisa told me this when I was getting ready to do this. She already told me that you know that's going to be one of the questions. The other questions, she said, you you know what you're dealing with. I see, I know. And so, so, but that, that's a good question. Nothing wrong with the question. That's the question we got to ask before. Um, the most of the time, people ask us, well, do you think it's gross or net? I really, I really don't have a specific thing to say gross or net. What I always say is this: Which one would you like to get blessed off of? You know what I said? That's all I say. I don't, because, because really, I, you know, I don't really tell, you know, people say, well, you don't do, no, I don't, we can't sit up and say, it's your gross, it's your net. There's no way in the Bible that tells us to do that. But we can say, wherever you want to be blessed off of, you know, I chose to do it off my gross because I want to be blessed at that level. Got it? I think, and that's just me now, you know, you may say, well, I want the net after I give the government theirs first. Say, I like to get mine before the government gets mine. You know what I'm saying? Whatever that is. Amen? So that, that is the answer. Anybody got any other questions about it? That's it? Okay. Now, uh, uh, tithe, once again, uh, people, you hear people say, well, tithe is in the Old Testament. We don't have to tithe no more. Now, you remember the amount that you wrote down. Look what they're arguing about. That, that, ain't, no, that ain't no money, y'all. I mean, really. I mean, you say, oh, yes, it is. But really, if you really look at it and say, can this pay one of my bills? Probably, it can't hardly pay some of y'all's sale bill. <laughs> no, I'm talking about a real sale bill. I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about, I'm talking about that $300 sale bill. You got a hand, you got a question? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, you tithe on your taxes. Oh, good question. Wow, we didn't get that one. Do we, and the question was, do we tithe on our tax return? Because you've already paid it, right? You've already tithed off of it. You're just trying to be slick. That's what I always say. That's what I say. That's, that's just, just me. That's just me. Um, I don't tithe off of my uh, uh, tax return. I give off of my tax return. In other words, if I get a tax return in, my, it's most likely it's bigger than what my tithe would even be with my tax return. Because I call it unexpected income. Now, now you got me going this place, and you're taking up my time, by the way. But anyway, because if you are getting a tax return, that means you gave the government too much money. And I refuse to give them too much money. 
That's a whole different subject. See, that's a, that's a whole different subject. We're not going to talk about that. Amen. And cut that part off the television. I don't want them coming out and seeing me. Amen. Amen. But, uh, but anyway, yeah. Uh, I give off my tax return. I don't necessarily tithe off of it. I give because, you know, that's, that's what I do. I'm not saying that's the only way. Some people tithe off it. It's fine. But I do not let any income come into my household where I don't give honor to God. That's just me. Whether, it is, whether it's earned or whether it is a gift. Got quiet on that one. Amen. That's just me. All right. You don't have to do it. You're not going to be a bad person. You ain't going to be cursed if you don't do it. It's just better if you do it. <laughs> Amen. Uh, now, look, now, look at this in Malachi chapter 3 and verse, uh, verse 7. It says, Yet from the day of your fathers you have gone away from my ordinance and have not kept them. Return to me and I will return to you, says the Lord of hosts. But you say, In what way shall we return? Underline that. What way shall we re- do what? Return. In what way shall we return? So the children of Israel is asking God a question. God, in what way can we return? What can get us back on track? Now, he says it in verse 7. He says that your fathers have re- rebelled and not been obedient to the ordinance. The ordinance simply means, it, all, it just means ordinary behavior. Can you say that with me? Ordinary behavior. In other words, God was saying, you, your tithe is just an ordinary behavior. That's what you do normally. That's just a way of life. You just, that's what you do. So it's a normal reaction, and those are the things you do. He said, but you came away from it. But at the end there, he says, in what way shall we return? Look at Malachi chapter 3, verse 8. It says, well, a man robbed God, yet you have robbed me, but you say, in what way have we robbed you? In what? Tithe and offer. Now, how many know that you can't pull out a, 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 you know, a gun and hold up God? Amen. Now, you know how that sounds. You're robbing your God. You can't rob him. You physically can't rob God. So, well, what is he talking about? He's talking about this. You may want to write this down. You rob God the opportunity to bless you. Amen. You rob God the opportunity to bless you. In other words, you, you, you're stopping God from really doing what he's doing. He wants to bless you, but you're, you're causing his hands to be tied, and he, cannot, and he cannot do it because God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he must repent. If he said it in his word, he can't go back on his word. He's got to stand on his word. Amen. Well, I know we're just getting started in a familiar verse right out of Malachi chapter 3. How many times have you heard that verse preached? How many times have you heard it ministered? Well, today we're learning a little bit more about the meaning of it and the importance of Malachi chapter 3 as we tithe, as we give unto God. It is a powerful scripture that helps us and really catapult us into the next level of abundance. It is an awesome thing. I want you to get this CD today. If you would call the number on the screen right now, operators are waiting on your phone call. They will send you out this CD absolutely free. Now, This is only available to those that are viewing the broadcast or listening to the broadcast. It is available to you right now. Call the number on the screen right now, and you will be able to get this CD. It will change your life. I'm telling you, it will change your life. So call right now. Operators are waiting on your phone call. Now let's go back into the message already in progress, and I'll be right back. Now then it says this in verse 9, and this is the part that really makes people angry. I don't know why. It says, you are cursed with a curse, for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. And then that's what people get back under that law. They say, well, that's in the Old Testament, Pastor. That's the law. Because Jesus came in Galatians chapter 3 and verse 13, and he redeemed us from the curse. Yes, Jesus Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law. You're absolutely right. But it's talking about salvation. It's talking about Jesus Christ came, and now we don't have to be under the condemnation and the conviction of the laws that were made outside of his word. Okay, I see I still got a problem. Okay, uh, can I get your wallet? All right, thank you. All right, thank you very much. Ah, da, 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 da. Hey, I'm under grace. Thou shalt not steal is under the law. <laughs> Wait a minute, you can give me a wallet with no money in it. So now, that's silly, isn't it? It's silly that you can steal in the, New, in the New Testament and not be under the consequences of stealing. How many know if you steal, 
you got to pay the consequences of stealing. I can't say, oh, I'm under grace, oh, I'm under grace. No, you can't say that. So why do we do it with tithe? Why we do it with tithing is primarily because we're having an issue with that. We have an issue with giving to God what belongs to him. Amen. Can't believe it. Empty. Thank you, sir. Amen. So now the Old Testament, once again, law, I mean the uh, tithe is before the law. Tithe is and that's what, so tithe had no, law had nothing to do with tithing. Tithing was a heart thing. God was dealing with the heart. Let's keep digging in this because I think you'll see what I'm talking about. Look over here in verse 10. It says, bring all the tithe into the storehouse that there be food in my house and try me now in this. Do what? Try me. Some of you got tests. Who got t- King James? Some, King James got proved, right? Prove me. Glory to God. And this is what I used to say, is that what God does is, God is putting a line in the sand. And he said, I double dog dare you cross it. You say, don't know me, young folk don't know about that. Don't know about that. I double dog dare you to cross it. God, God, he said, try me. Prove me. And see, won't I bless you. In other words, he said, not only this is a test for you, but this is a test for me. And see, and then when you understand that, you begin to step into a whole different area of blessing. What what he says here when he says, try me in this, says the Lord, if I would not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out such blessings that you will not have room enough to receive. Now, the problem about that that people have is that they believe that when they give their tithe, that automatically God's going to drop a Mercedes Benz out the sky, hit the ground, and then you're going to jump in and drive it. Now, that sounds good. But if you ever stop by the police officer, you got to give them your registration and proof of ownership. And then he asks you, where is the proof that you have registration and ownership? And then you say, well, I got this from God. They say, okay, please get out the car now. Put your hand behind your head. Walk back slowly now. Walk back slowly. Because you're going to jail. Right? Because we know... And sometimes that's how we believe God operates. God does not operate that way. He explains how he operates. He says that men shall give, Luke 6, 38, that men shall give out of their bosom unto you. So God's going to use people here on the earth to bless you. And that's okay, amen? But when he talks about open the windows of heaven, he's talking about this, people. He's talking about opportunities, God creative ideas. He's talking about things that you think about. How many of you ever got thoughts in your mind that just overflood you? You know, you get one idea, and then tomorrow you have another idea, the next day you have another idea, and you're like, oh, I can't do the first idea until I get the second idea. How many of you did that? Now, that's over. That's over right there. I mean, that's, you just got too much. You can't even handle it. But how many know if you can handle a lot of money? Even if you don't have enough in your bank account, you can, you can send it overseas. You, you, man, you must. Shh, come on. I mean, you won't run out of places to put money. Now, you may want to put them over your cousin's house, but you, you won't run out of place. You won't run out of place to put no money, though. You won't run out of place. <laughs> you come on, leave me and lay Lisa house. Hey, hey, y'all, y'all put this money. Is it, is it legal? Yeah, okay, come on, break it over there. Amen. But we can buy, you got to up under our mattresses. Praise God. Amen. Amen. So, but, so there's no, you know, there's, there's, he's not talking about money, because if he was talking about money, there was, there was, you always have a place to put money, but he's talking about creative ideas. He's talking about being creative. He's talking about all those things that's coming to your thought on how to bring wealth in your household, how to bless your family, how to begin to do better, how to get that new job, how to begin to do. He's talking about all those creativities. And he says, hey, you have so much that you will not even have room enough to receive it. Isn't that awesome? But number 11 says, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sake so that you will, you will, he will not destroy the fruit of your ground, nor shall the vine of your fruit fall, I mean, excuse me, fruit for you in, fail for you in the field. I thought, yeah, there it is. I'm reading it different. The vine failed to bear fruit for you in the field, says the Lord of hosts. Now, let's look at verse 11. We'll stay on verse 11 for just a few moments. And I want to give me two people, not, I don't need the three yet. I just need two people for this example, just two folks. Okay. Man, you're going to be my example all day. Amen. Good. Thank you, sir. Come on, Pastor. Amen. So, now, uh, Pastor, uh, you're going to be saved. Oh, thanks a lot. Okay, you saved. you saved, man. Uh, Deacon Troy, you ain't going to be saved. You're not a deacon no more. <laughs> 
All right, now, if Troy gets $500 and Pastor uh, Hopper gets $500, okay, how much money do they have each? Okay, how much money can, can, of, of stuff can he buy? How much stuff can he buy? But he ain't saved. He, he ain't saved, so he still can buy $500? But he don't shout. He ain't a pastor. He don't, he don't even speak in tongues. He don't have a Holy Ghost. Now, y'all know you see me. But his 500 is 500, right? This is what it is. Is that God says that his 500 can only get him $500 worth. But his 500, because he tithed, has been blessed. Why? Because the devourer can come and steal and take his stuff. So, even though he has the same amount, his doesn't go the same distance. Right? Because he gets interruptions with his money that's orchestrated by the devil. You know how your tire go out when you don't need it to go out? Amen. You know, your tire, your tire on your car, you know one tire bus can, can make up a whole check. Yeah. Me, I'm talking to the wrong people, let me see. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, but y'all, I know some folks in here know what I'm talking about. One blowout tire can mess up that check that week. Because you got to get that tire. And if you get that tire, something ain't getting paid. Amen. Got it? <laughs> y'all, some of y'all know what I'm talking about. Y'all used to know, you know, but y'all don't know now. We don't know about that now, Pastor. But anyway, yeah. so, so, so what's the difference between these two is, is that God gives them a promise. The promise is found in Malachi chapter 3, verse 11. Let's look what he says. Are you there? I told him to keep that up there, didn't I? All right. I think I'm going to have to get the stenchy cord. <laughs> Bible man, Malachi 3 and 11. 3 and 11, Malachi. 3 and 11, 3 and 11. I don't think he heard that. Praise God. Amen. I didn't think y'all heard that. I got to cut my mic off when I start thinking in my inside voice. Malachi chapter 3 verse 11. All right. Now watch this now. That's Galatians. Malachi chapter 3 verse 11. Thank you, sir. All right. Keep that right there. All right. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sake so that he will not destroy the fruit of your ground. So time goes by so fast when you get in the message, but you don't have to miss it. You can get the entire message today. All you have to do is call the number on the screen right now. Operators are waiting on your phone call. They will send you out this CD absolutely free. Now, I must tell you, this will not be available on our website. You can only get it by calling the number on the screen. And also, too, you cannot get it at our bookstore for free. You have to call, you have to call the number on the screen right now. They're waiting on your phone call. Go ahead and do that right now. Now, if you're not born again, if Jesus Christ is not Lord of your life, if you say, Pastor, I need a relationship with God, and you're starting off in the right spot. You're starting off in the right place. You know, in order to start this abundant life and living this abundant life, it is your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Knowing him as your Lord and Savior can change and transform your life. Can I pray for you right now to receive the Lord Jesus Christ? Would you say this prayer with me? Say, Heavenly Father, I ask you to forgive me of all my sins, known and unknown. I renounce them all. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I receive you now as Lord and Savior of my life. Well, if you said that prayer a minute with your whole heart, call us here at New Life Christian Fellowship Church. We have some great things for you. We're going to give you a disciple manual. I'm going to send you also to a CD that's called Living in Your Righteousness. And also, too, I'm going to put in there a daily bread that shows you a daily confession. And also, to a daily, every day you have a testimony of God's grace and God's mercy. We'll send that out to you absolutely free. Now, the second thing you need to do for me is get in a Bible teaching church, somewhere where you're going to learn the Word of God and you're going to grow in the Word of God. Now, if you're looking for a, a, a Bible teaching church, you may say, I'm looking for one. I don't know where one is in my area. If you desire to, you can call the number on the screen or you can go to our website. If you go to our website, go to the comment section and put into the comment section, looking for a church and tell us what state you're in, 
where's your location, uh, and then we'll be able to tell you some sighted churches right around your area that's teaching the Word of God. And you can go and check them out, and uh, we're going to be praying for you and believing God for supernatural abundance to happen in your life that you flow as God desires you to flow. I'm excited today that you joined us, and I don't take it for granted that you tuned in today. So I want to tell you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for being a part of the program today. Well, I'll be back next time right here. In Jesus' name, God bless you. Getting educated by those that my grandmother helped build with her leaflet offering. Six dollars. One was two seventy-five. I'm looking at these things that grandmother gave. And I found out why God did what he did in our lives. See, because this is not about just you tithing. This is about setting your family free. It's about breaking the curse off of your family. It's about breaking poverty. This is talking about every area of your life. This is talking about quit being at a place of lack where you can live on top of the world. Why? Because Jesus Christ has died for you in order that you'll be able to take part of this covenant blessing. The heart test. Call now for a free CD of today's broadcast. Dial 1-866-910-LIFE. That's 1-866-910-5433. Dr. Easley would like you to have this free CD. We are waiting for your call. Visit our website at newlifegcsc.org where you'll find more series by Dr. Easley. We would like to invite you to connect with Dr. Easley on Twitter at Dr. Dexter Easley. On Facebook, facebook.com, NLCF. GCSC on YouTube, Dexter Easley Ministry, and visit our website at newlifegcsc.org. Stay connected. And welcome to another exciting edition of our Study of the Word broadcast with Apostle David Kaiser Jr. A Study in the Word is an evangelistic outreach of rightly dividing the Word Church of God, located in Mobile, Alabama. Stay tuned for the next 30 minutes as we take you live into the sanctuary with Apostle David Kaiser Jr. You be blessed. When you don't know what, who is more important? Y'all, God, amen. And so you could even pray a prayer. Uh, like this, Lord, I, I'm interested in this area. Uh, but there's something in my spirit that says that there's a certain degree of success that awaits me uh, in this particular area and this particular understanding. Zumba, y'all, y'all got it. And so I need to know somebody who knows Zumba, because all I have is a desire now, right? Y'all got it. Amen. And so what God will do when you get in pursuit, He'll put you into contact with somebody who knows Zumba. Y'all got it, and then you get in there and you take the process to the next level, right? And uh, and one thing you have to now servant servant means someone who was humble enough to be led. See, you can't go on the Zuma class. Someone I already know. <laughs> you zooming, you know. And they, that ain't Zumba. <laughs> right, that, right, you can't go in the class. <laughs> Tell me, I got this. I got this. Let me show you. Let me show you. You're going to be zooming right on out the door. Right, y'all getting it? Right? So, so when God brings you into contact with who you need to know, you got to, you got to take a different posture. Right? You got to be grasshopper. Right? And you can't be telling sensei how to kick. 
right? You got to be grasshopper. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Amen. And you'll be surprised how far your humility will get you. You're getting the gist of what I'm saying? Amen. You can't be jumping in and say, oh, but. No. You just hush and listen. You know, and, and, and most of the time what, what, what your uh, who going to do is start with the basics with you. And some, some people can't stand that. They, they can't be patient enough when, when the who start with the basics. They don't know what you know. Y'all got it? And, and if you're going to see what you don't realize is that when you meet the who, you become a representation of the who when you leave them. You're going to go and say, the who told me. Right? And so they want to make sure that when you leave their presence, you're going to be on the right path. Right? Exactly. You got it. So, so you got to go into those environments with a heart of humility. Y'all got it. Go in there ready to glean and to, and to suck up everything that you can, you can get in that particular uh, uh, first encounter. Right? Y'all got it? Dr. Mike Murdoch said in one of his books, the difference between a season is a person. Say that. The difference between a season is a person. In other words, the people that you allow to come into your life can change the season of your life depending on what they bring into your life. Y'all got it? And that happens sometimes subconsciously and unaware to a person that ain't paying attention. Right? They allow people to come into their lives and before, before they recognize it and realize it, that person then changed the whole direction of their lives. They've gone in a whole other direction that God never told them to go in because they allowed somebody to come into their life and change the season of their lives. You got to know when to tell folks, I'm not in that season. That's, I'm not in, that's not my season. You got it? Amen. And so, so we want to be careful, right? Uh, in Joshua 1 and 1, four individuals are mentioned. Moses is mentioned. The Lord was mentioned. Joshua was mentioned. And none, Joshua's father, was mentioned. Y'all got it? All of those individuals were instrumental in Joshua becoming a success. Y'all got it? Now, we know uh, that the Lord was the most important one. And we may talk about that in, in a few moments. You got it? But the Bible said Joshua uh, and Nun, Joshua, the son of Nun. Right? And so what that tells me, and, and whenever you read scriptures and, and it starts talking about genealogy, uh, so and so begot so and so and so and so begot so and so and so what it's saying is all of those individuals were instrumental in that in that family tree they made significant impact y'all y'all got it to the next generation and so here because the Holy Ghost chose to give Joshua's father props that means he must have raised him right y'all y'all got that means he had a positive uh, indelible impact uh, on Joshua's life. I believe that prepared him for Moses. Y'all got it? Because Moses wouldn't have just picked anybody. Right? He just wouldn't have picked nobody with their pants hanging down sagging. Right? Because what you have to understand is, is, is Joshua was allowed in the inner circle. Now, Moses leading two million people. You got him? But he picked Joshua to be in his inner circle. And, and frankly, aside from sister, sister Moses, you couldn't get no closer to Moses than Joshua. Y'all see that? Amen. And so, 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 so that meant that, that his father was, was, was significant in his life. The Holy Ghost chose to, to, to talk about him, right? Is, is that all right? all right? And then, of course, in the Bible talks about uh, Moses and it talks about the Lord. And so my point is, in every stage of your life, uh, God has positioned certain people, 
to help you to become a success, right? And you need to pray and ask God to help you uh, by way of the Holy Spirit to recognize them uh, when they show up. Y'all got it? In every stage of your life, God has positioned certain people to help you uh, to become a success in that stage that you're in uh, at that particular time. Y'all got it? And, and it's a golden opportunity. You know, I was, uh, oh man. I was considering a, a, a business venture, a venture, and uh, Sister Kyle and I, and I was, uh, I said, it's a golden opportunity. This is going to bless somebody. And as I was meditating on, you know, whether or not I should, you know, dive in on the, on the next level, I turned the television on, man of God, I never saw him before in my life. And he said this. He said, a lifetime opportunity has to be taken advantage of during the lifetime of the opportunity. Did y'all hear that? He said, a lifetime opportunity must be taken advantage of during the lifetime of the opportunity. Y'all got it? And then he said, because God will give you the right of first refusal. Y'all got it? See, if you don't take advantage of the opportunity, what he'll do, he'll give the opportunity to somebody else. But he will give you, he's given all and going to continue to give all of us the right of first refusal. That means he's going to give you the option to say yes or no to the opportunity. And I'm telling y'all, some of y'all in here, God have given multiple opportunities. And you, through abdication of making a decision, lost the right to first refusal. And so he said, God will give you the right to first, uh, to, uh, 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 first refusal. You know, the Bible said, the Bible two or three, we didn't hear that. And the Holy Ghost said, hit me three times in a real quick. And then he said this. He said, if you don't grab a hold to an opportunity while it's passing by, it will pass you by. <laughs> It'll pass you by. You got it? And I said, oh, Lord, I, I hear you. I heard the voice of God. Even though it came through a vessel I never saw, never heard his voice, but when he spoke, I heard God speaking to me. And, and so I told my wife, you know, the Lord said, don't, don't let this opportunity pass by. And for me to take advantage of the opportunity during the lifetime of the opportunity because I have the right of first refusal. And I know it's first refusal because when it was presented to me, they said somebody else came up in their mind, but God spoke to them about me. Y'all right, got it? Amen. And so uh, my point, God have people stationed along the, every area of your life, every, every dispensation of your life, and you got to stay sensitive so you can, you can hear and recognize those people when they show up because they're there. Y'all got it? They are there. Amen. Now listen, some of these people you will have a relationship with. Some of them you won't. And uh, you know, can I confess? That part right there used to bother me because I used to want to have a relationship with the people that I felt like could pour into my life. Am I helping anybody? And, and I found out that, you know, sometimes God will have people to pour into your life and, and, and you won't even be able to get close to them. You won't be able to get close to them, right? But you got to be able to recognize, though, even though I can't get as close as I want to, God using that person to speak to me and to minister into, into my life. Y'all got it? You know, I found out that, that you know, Successful people can only have so many people in their inner circle. So many, they, they, you know, that's just the way it is. You, you got it. It came to a point in time where, where the crowd, the people in the crowd couldn't get as close to Jesus without going through the inner circle. They had to find somebody in the inner circle and tell them to go in 
and ask Jesus could they have an audience. And people get, they get a problem with that. You know, I just can't walk in past the door. I usually could walk in the church and just, and just go in past the office. Well, well you know, sometimes you get to a point where you, cannot, you can't do that no more. That don't mean pastor getting high-minded or looking down his nose. Got Alex out there. He's bigger than the dope. You know, you can't get by. I said that, and Alex knew exactly what I meant, didn't you? I said that in a positive. That was, that was male affirmation. That's, that's what that was. It was which, you knew it. You knew it. You knew it, Denny. You knew it, Denny. You knew it. That was male affirmation. That was not a put down. So don't be rubbing on Alex Beck. Yeah, like, it's all right. It's all right. <laughs> Pastor didn't mean it. He didn't mean it. He didn't mean it, Pastor. He didn't. He just say anything. <laughs> Lord have mercy. <laughs> he understood exactly. He's saying, yeah, Pastor. <laughs> yeah. No, I am. I ain't. That's all with it. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I know that's right. That was male affirmation. So, so listen, some people... <laughs> That's just this guy. She 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 a loving person. It, it, you know, sometimes you don't think I'm as loving. But I am. I am. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> see, I had to defend myself because see in the truck I'd be getting it all with. I can't believe you said that. <laughs> I can't believe you said it. And I'm like, the boy all right, I'm telling you. <laughs> Lord, how mercy. Where am I? We was a far off or a strong close. Yeah. All right, so some of them you have. These people, the who's in your life, some of them will have, uh, you have a relationship with and some of them you won't. And, and that's important because perhaps some of you were like me thinking that anybody that God uses to, 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 to bless your life or to give you instructions as it relates to being successful, you always have a relationship with them. You got it. And that's not always the case, and you can't be offended about that. Y'all got it? Uh, listen, some of them will be saved, and some of them won't. Y'all got it? Because one of the things God has had to do, you know, over the years is drop certain biblical wisdom in ungodly vessels. Y'all okay. got it? Because perhaps it may not have been anybody in the kingdom that was ready for it. Okay. You got it? I believe he does that quite often in, in the area of science and, and medicine and, 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 and inventions and all of that kind of stuff. Y'all got it? Because a lot of times, you know, the world will be wiser than the children of of, of, of God because they're always after something, trying to find out something, trying to... I wonder what's down there in that hole. Right? It's dark down there. It's deep down there. Throw a rock in there. Don't want to hear it hit by. I think we ought to go down there, right? <laughs> I'm like, no, no, no. Right? But somebody going down there, and they're going to find out, they're going to come back, they're going to do a documentary, and they're going to tell you what's down there. The third person, okay, <laughs> going to do the documentary. But, but, but listen, sometimes they'll be saved, and sometimes they won't be saved, right? And you got to be all right with that. You know, sometimes God will teach you some things through an un unsaved vessel. See, if you know the word, though, you know where they're getting off, right? But don't not get what you need. Y'all got it? Amen. Somebody say, get what you need. And I got this on him. Please understand this. They will not be there to do the work that only you are supposed to do in order to make you a success. Y'all got it? Because some people have that mentality. They think when, when the who show up, they're supposed to do all the work. 
you got to make you a success. And who is saying, listen, I've already done that work once. I ain't even do it no more. Right. This is how I did it. And this is what you need to do. And I'll come back and I'll check on you to see whether or not you are doing it correctly. But I'm not going to do it for you. Y'all got it? And, and you'll be surprised. The more they see you uh, uh, invest yourself, the more they'll be willing to communicate to you. And every now and then they might put their hand in it too and help you do this or, the, or, the, or to do that. You got it, but you got to invest yourself in your own success. Somebody say it. I have to invest myself in my own success. That was pretty good, right? So Joshua had his father to pour into his life. He had Moses to pour into his life, and he had the Lord to pour into his life. And, of course, the Lord uh, was the most important one of the three, and he will always be the most important person uh, that we need to have to pour into our lives. You got it? Uh, You have to be careful about, and I'm closing, about success. Go to Deuteronomy Deuteronomy 8, I think in 18, or is it 18 and 8? Let's see. And uh, because what the enemy will try to do when you become successful, I think it's 8 and 18. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He'll try to, he'll try to cause you. And I know this kind of stuff never enters your mind, you know, that when I, get stable, when I become successful that I'm going to forget about God. I'm going to forget about the things of God. And um, sometimes success can cause you to become so focused on your success because being focused is one of the principles that breeds success. Right? A diligent man shall abound with blessing. The Bible says and so what that means is that when you get after something, you, you focus in on it. you all in. You're not half in. You got it. Amen. You got a direction to your life. You won't be deterred, you know. And so, and, and you got to have that, but you have to be careful that you don't allow that to get out of control. Because you can get so focused on your success or being successful until you forget about God. And, and forgetting about God is not, I just, I just forgot about God. His importance in your life begin, to you will begin to wane. Is that is a good way to say that? Yeah, he's not first place no more in your, in your life. You, you got, and that's, that's, that's real subtle, subtle. Yeah, y'all got it. But the enemy has used that, and he continues to use that on those who are not aware of his tactics, right? Deuteronomy 8 and what? And 18. He says, But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God. Man. God knows the end from the beginning. Right? I don't care how they say, Lord, Lord, we ain't going to never, and I know that's bad, we ain't going to never forget about the Lord. Well, if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, where would I be? Y'all, 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 y'all got it. And people confess that, they testify that, they say all that kind of stuff. But as soon, sometimes, if they get to that place of stability, and they got it clicking, they got it going on, Man, they start forgetting about the law. They never denied that they were the children of God. Y'all got it. But in their actions, God said, you done forgot about me. You done forgot about me. When you were making minimum wage, I couldn't beat you to church. Now, God was first place in, in your life. Now they want to take it up to fifteen dollars an hour. Ain't the Lord good? That ain't no money. Yeah, not from the perspective of what you want out of life. 
$15. That's what I'm saying. I'm not saying don't be grateful, you know. But I'm just, yeah, right. That, you know, $15 an hour, you, you, you know. And, and, and God said, look, I don't look down through time. And, and I decided to warn them about something that he knew they were going to do. Hmm? Verse 18, this is why I am. It says, but thou shalt remember the Lord, thy God. For it is he, oh, Lord. Now, remembering the Lord don't mean I remember the Lord. No, that means you get on up, you come to the house of God. You, right, you invest yourself in the things of God, in the kingdom of God, in the house of God. Uh, 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 yeah, that's, that's what he, that, that don't mean you remember the Lord, you stop paying your tithe. And you believe in God for more. Right? But he said, thou shalt remember the Lord thy God. For it is what? Lord, have mercy. That what? That giveth thee the power. You know, see, success will never be by your own might. And by your own power. Right. If, if you acquire any degree of success, it's going to be because God gave you the power. That's why I say, I don't understand that. You know, God will give you the power to go to the job, and he won't give you power to come to church. Right, right. Yeah, you done forgot about God. And I'm going to tell you, the way that happens, the more you put God back like that, the easier it becomes to do. The easier it becomes to you know, and you need to quit using me as an excuse. Pastor don't know I'm tired. You probably were tired when you went to work this morning, but you went. Mm, and work. And God gave you the power to do that. Right? But we'll talk ourselves into, but he ain't got no more strength. God ain't got no more power left. When I clock out, the power done turned off. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, right, right. Yeah. Okay. Say, so, is he to give thee the power to get wealth, right? That he may establish his covenant, which he swear unto thy fathers, as it is this day. Y'all got it? So, so a part of your wealth is to help establish God's covenant, you know, in the earth. I, I'm creating a... a um, a post cross prayer for you guys. And I'm going to put it to, to some music to it, and you can, we're going to record it if you want it. Amen. You can play it in your, you know, just to get post prayer praying in you. Believe, thanking God for all the things He's made available for you in Christ Jesus. Y'all got it. And at the end of that prayer, as I was kind of wrapping it up the other day, the Lord. And I put in there about believing for all of these things that God, the manifestation of all of these things that God has said he's already given us in Christ Jesus. And the Holy Ghost had me to put in there. Uh... Oh, hi. I'm co-pastor Ann Kaiser. We're right in the Biden Word Church. And we would like to invite you to our 2017 Sister Sweet Must Stand Women's Conference, which will be held right here in the beautiful city of Orange Beach, Alabama, at the Career Resort. So I would like to take this time to invite you to come. The dates are September the 14th through the 16th, 2017. That's right, so be sure to come and join us. The ladies at Rightly are already making preparation just for you to have a wonderful time in the Lord, fellowshipping with other sisters in the Lord. So stay tuned and our announcer will give you some pics from last year. So be blessed. Ladies, it's that time again. Time for the Sisters We Must Stand Women's Conference 2017. This year's conference will be held once again at the beautiful Caribe the Resort in Orange Beach, Alabama. We invite you to come join us September the 14th through the 16th at the Caribe for our wonderful time in praise, worship, and fellowship. We will have five dynamic speakers that are seeking a word just for you, woman of God. So grab your family and your friends and reserve your condo now. To register for your conference seat, call 251-433-0121. Or contact your rightly representative. To receive your conference discount, you must register by August 20th. Sisters, we must stand 2017. See you there.
have just been blessed by studying the word broadcast with apostle david kaiser jr if you would like an audio or video copy of today's message please email us at rdtwtvpros at gmail.com connect with us daily on facebook twitter youtube or ustream to catch past shows words of encouragement special events or join us live in the sanctuary we're located at 760 Ermira street in mobile alabama our service times are Sunday school at 9.30 a.m., Sunday morning worship at 11 o'clock, and Tuesday night Bible study at 7 p.m. Join us at this same time next week for a study in the Word broadcast with Apostle David Kaiser, Jr. You be blessed. Life Television Network, Chickasaw, Mobile, Preacher. friend i'm telling you i know after last week you want to tune in and you're tuning in for part two i want to take you right into the service where god is moving by this his spirit don't touch that dial because i'm telling you miracles signs and wonders took place a lump disappeared in the service we had so many moves of god in one place thank you pastor alan robinson and the pastors of your district now y'all excuse my dress happy new year but guess what you know it's cold from where i am but i made it to the studio i got my head had turn on backwards because I know, my, I know some of you are going to frown because I got my Steelers hat, but hey, guess what? I'm a fan of Mike Tomlin, so don't get upset. I, I am a Raven. I am a Raven, Baltimore Ravens, and being from Texas, I am a Cowboy. So I got multiple teams. I got multiple teams that I enjoy. But I want to take you to the service and give me a call, 1-800-478-4225, 1-800-478-4225. This is yours truly, Doc Warren, saying get ready for a move of God. Come on, worship him. Come on, if you're a child of God, worship him. I'm a candidate for a miracle. I'm a candidate for a miracle. I'm a candidate for a miracle. Hallelujah. I hear the Lord saying, quit trying to do it yourself. Quit trying to do it yourself. Quit trying to do it yourself, young lady. Quit trying to do it yourself. Quit trying to stand yourself, pastors. Preachers, quit trying to do it yourself. God said, that's why I got, that's why you have me here. That's what I'm for. Today, God spoke this word to me. He said, man, he said, folks are trying to do it themselves. They're trying to do ministry themselves. The effects of fervent prayers of a righteous man avail of much. We're too busy trying to pray for stuff. See, God didn't give us prayer to get money and stuff. I just don't believe that. I just, I just don't believe that prayer is a mechanism or something that God gave us just to get money and stuff. I just, I'm not saying it can't happen and God don't want us to pray, but I'm saying that God didn't give us prayer 
Because if that's all that prayer could do, young lady, why does the atheists that don't believe in God get cars and money and college degrees? Why is it, sis? It's something more than prayer. Because if you read the book of Mark, when it talks about prayer, it talks about the heathen's prayer. It talks about the hypocrite prayer. Some of them think they're going to get stuff for their repetition, repeating themselves. Hey, time out, boy. The fix your fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Prayer should bring you closer to God. Prayer should be something that causes you to connect because prayer is a form of communication, like you communicate with your husband or your wife. That's what prayer is. That's how you know your wife. That's how you know your husband. Because of that communication. And we don't communicate with God enough. We're trying to figure it out ourselves. We have become so educated, so intellectual, that we have quit depending on God. And we're making a mess. That's why this country is in trouble. And it will continue to be in trouble with homosexuality and passing all these laws, these diabolic laws. Same-sex marriages. I love you, Jesus. I love you. I worship and just want to tell you, Lord, that I love you more than anything. Don't sing it if you don't mean it. Oh, I love you, Jesus. towards heaven lift your hands worship the Lord come on worship God don't let it just be a song listen what you're saying listen what you're saying that should be a prayer You said you could tell him the Lord you love him more. One more time, lift, listen to the words. I love, I love Jesus. I worship you. I worship what you gonna say? Just wanna tell you. More and more and more and more. Let me ask the question in here. Is there anybody that's sick in your body today? Don't make a sickness, but if you're sick in your body, I want you to wave your hand. If you're sick in your body, wave your hand. Wave your hand if you're sick in your body. Wave your hand if you're sick in your body. If you got a pain in your body, you got a pain in your body, wave your hand. I want you to come down here shoulder to shoulder. Come real quick. Come around this way. Now, come around this way. Come around this way. Come quick. Come around this way. Come around that way. Listen to me. Listen to me. Come around this way. Come around this way. Shoulder to shoulder. Shoulder to shoulder. Step a couple of steps forward. A couple of steps forward. Shoulder to shoulder. Listen to me. Is there anybody else that's sick in your body? Don't wait. Listen to me. Don't you wait. 
until you see the manifestation of people being healed but come now if you got a pain in your body if you got a sickness if you got a headache broken leg broken foot I believe God now some of you that's listening you can call us right now with a prayer request I don't know who's listening what's that phone number four four six two seven one oh three oh four four six two seven one oh three oh you can call us right now call us right now hallelujah Jesus we're looking for God to heal we, we expect a God right there just right there not not not, not right there right over there amen right there shoulder to shoulder somebody just stand behind them I'm getting ready to pray just stand behind them uh, is there somebody else coming now listen to me if you're coming come now if you're coming for a miracle if you need a miracle come now don't wait what you need God to do for you young lady what you say my neck has been in pain all day your neck is squeeze my hand your neck has been in pain how long since you woke up squeeze my hand your neck has been what you sure you sure move it Y'all can't clap no better than that. Fire, 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 fire. What you need God to do for you, sis? What's wrong with you? You've been having migraine headaches? Migraine headaches? You got one now? Huh? You got a migraine right now? You had one? Squeeze my hand. What about that blood condition? Close your eyes. What I mean, sometimes migraines is a cause. Anybody's in the nursing field? Wave your hand if you're in a nursing. Sometimes migraine could be caused by a deficiency, right? Am I right? Y'all help me out. Now, I don't, I'm not a doctor. You in the nursing? You go to school for nursing? Are you in nursing? You go, how to going to school for nursing. Come here. Sometimes when people change their diet, it can help. Right? Squeeze my hand. Some things that you have... Have you always had migraines? You just start having them? Hallelujah. Some things that you desire. Have you been under stress lately? I know you have. Somebody said that's general. See, sometimes we want something so bad. And when it don't happen, it affects us, affects us emotionally. Hallelujah. Even certain hurts. Things you didn't expect for it to turn out. Lift your hands up towards heaven. Towards heaven. Close your eyes. Quit trying to do it yourself. That experience is not a negative experience. It's an experience of another chapter in your life. Fire Bosha. Close your eyes. You can either become bitter or better. Oh, shot. Y'all quiet up in here. Don't dwell with the attitude of anybody that somebody did me wrong. Let the prophet talk. Turn it over to God. And we know that all things work together. I rebuke these migraines. And I pray that there's a release of this stress. I command it to disappear. Now open your mouth and shout. That's it. Release it. Release it right now. That's it. Release it. Really. That's it. Let the tears flow. Don't hold back the tears. It's not the time to try to be strong. Get it out of your system. 
Some of y'all, get it out of your system. Get it out of your system. You will be, you will not be productive if you don't get it out. God's got an assignment over your life. Hallelujah. What's wrong with you, sis? What you need God to do for you? You got severe what? Come on, stand. I need a brother. Amen. I know some of you brothers say, I don't like to catch sisters, but sometimes y'all brothers got to catch sisters. Y'all catch me. I don't want none of these mothers to hurt themselves. You said what? And both your legs? You a member of this church? Squeeze my hand. You got, you had pain? You do? You do? You sure? What? Somebody move out of the way. Y'all better be good. Amen. She may run that way. I move. Y'all better take my. I know what I'm talking about. That's what I'm telling y'all to move. Somebody. some room give us some room let her go let her go let her go move out of the way hey, shot out of a hot hey. yeah, yeah. folks want to dance y'all got to shift it sis you supposed to have arthritis in both your legs You supposed to have arthritis. You said your leg was hurting. What's going on? What's happening? You, Folks looking at me funny. What's going on with your leg? Something going on with your knees? Something going on with your knees? Something going on with your knees? Some what? Come on, you gotta. Come on, what? You better stop. What you doing? You got to offer. Uh, hey, hey! My God, my God. Grab somebody by the hand and tell them if you need a miracle, you better learn how to praise God when the praise starts going on. Tell them the prophet don't have to touch you. Just learn how to praise God for somebody else's miracle. Hey, good God from Zion. Hey! What you need God to do for you, young lady? Since the age of 27, says that y'all got to watch me. Y'all watch, watch. Y'all got to watch me at all times, cause sometimes I touch folks while I'm talking. Watch me, please. I almost touch you. Ah, la ba Sunday, he can. You said since the age of 27, so you got a, you got a migraine right now. You had one when you was coming up here. Throw your hands up right now. Say, did, were you here Sunday? Something happens to you Sunday, right? What happened to you Sunday? Something happened in your tongue. Something happened in your tongue? Something happened in your tongue? I was talking to the Lord. In what? In tongue. Sure? Positive. You sure? Positive. Still there? Yes. Fires! Come on, shout out. Come on. Loose that tongue that's speaking. Loose that tongue that's speaking. Talk in that language. Don't you be talking about hallelujah. You better move your lips and talk in that language. and talk. Fire! That's a few minutes in my brain. Why are you not talking? Talk. Talk. Move your lips and talk. Keep on moving your lips. Why are you not talking? Somebody else, we get ready. What you need God to do for you, sis? Huh? You have a what? What? Shoo. Shoo. Disappear. Y'all ain't saying the choir. Y'all better praise them. Folks watching y'all on the counter, they wonder what y'all doing. What you need God to do for you? 
What you need God to do for you? What's wrong with you? Look at me. Did something just happen? Huh? Did something just happen? out of here. What you need God to do for you? Squeeze my hand right now. Close your eyes. Yes, God. I pray for stability. Balance. That equilibrium. Heal. Sure. You better praise him. You better praise him. Let me ask the question in here. Don't check it yet. Who in here had a knot in who have a knot in their body somewhere? Whether it's a lump in the breast, a lump anywhere, wave your hand. You got it a knot somewhere? Not wave your hand. I see one. Is somebody else? Amen. You got a knot? Where? Somebody else. Somebody else? Hallelujah, Jesus. Mother right there? Amen. Check. I see him. I see him. I can see. Oh, you okay? The prophet sees. Amen. You got, you got a knot? You can feel it? Feel for it. Touch it. What? Ah! What? You got a knot? Check it. Check it. What? Where's the knot? Oh, I feel the anointing. You, you're trying to find it? You can't find it? She's still trying to look for it. She's still looking for it in your office. She's still looking for it in your office. But you better praise him, daughter. You better praise him. <laughs> Keith, I don't know if your camera can turn around. You, I see you feel it for it. I see you feel it for it. What's going on, sis? What? What? Don't let her tap that office. somebody by the hand and tell them quit trying to do it yourself come on open your mouth and tell somebody quit trying to do it yourself quit trying to bless yourself quit trying to deliver yourself quit trying to set yourself free call on Jesus and watch him do it Y'all ain't excited enough for me. Hey, Shabbat. I don't know why y'all don't get excited. Get excited like your pastor. Give it to God. Give it to him. Give him every problem. Give him every heartache. Give him every situation. 
Lord friend, I know this is yours truly, Dr. Warren, back, and I know you enjoyed that service. Now, if you would like to get this DVD, we don't do CDs, but DVD, you can write me and put a $12 seed offering or anything above to P.O. Box 724, Upper Marlboro, Maryland, 20773. The number should be on the screen. The address should be on the screen. Or you can call me 1-800-478-4225. Happy New Year. I hope you're enjoying your time of celebration, having a good time in this new year. And uh, this is a good year. This is a good year to serve the Lord. This is a good year. Any year is a good year to serve the Lord. And we thank you. And we say Happy New Year because it is a new year. Whether it's 2013, whether we're going over to 2014, 2015, if you're alive, we want to let you know that this is a good new year. And I'm quite sure you enjoy this message. Now, give me a call. Some of you that want to give a donation, put it in the mail, P.O. Box 724, uh, Upper Marlboro, Maryland, 20773. You can call me at 1-800-478-4323. 1-800-478-4225. Uh, Fred, you can put that on the screen. When I'm moving fast, y'all see my leather coat. So, you know, it's hot, getting hot, getting hot where I am. Uh, but it's been cold. But I thank you for tuning in. And I love you with the love of Jesus. And quit trying to do it yourself because God's got you covered. See you next week. If you would like to learn more about Robbie Warren Ministries or to find out when Dr. Robbie Warren will be ministering in your area, visit our website at www.robbiewarrenministries.org or you can email us at rwministry at netscape.net.
You're tuned in to Life Television Network, bringing you nothing but the best in anointed teaching, preaching, and gospel music. Hi, my name is Pastor Wayne Johnson, and we're here today, we're doing a teaching on the infilling or the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And I just want to welcome you to a word, a great teaching that we're going to expound and go into some scripture and kind of lay out a foundation that God want to reveal himself to us in a different way. And we're here in Walnut Hill where our church is, Emmanuel Faith Center, and I just want, I want to say thanks for joining us today, and, and I'm excited about what God is doing in these last days. So let's dig into the word of God. And so our foundational scriptures are, are going to be 1 Corinthians chapter 12. We're going to start there. And also after that, we're going to go into um, uh, Acts chapter 2 on the day of Pentecost when the church came. And also we're going to go also in Isaiah 28 verses 11 and 12. And then John 7 and 38. And then we'll end up in uh, Psalms 103 verse 1 through 5. We, we may go a little bit different from those, but these are the foundational scriptures, and you can go back and you can look at them also, you know. And so here we are today, we're talking about the infilling of the Spirit. And so in the beginning, God, you know, gave us his word, and chapter 12 of 1 Corinthians talking about the, the gifts of the Spirit, you know. And so I'm going to read uh, probably maybe down to the first 13 verses, and in, and in between that, I may stop and talk a little bit. And so here, here we go. 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 12, verse 1. Not concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Ye know that you were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols, even as you were led. Wherefore, I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calls Jesus a curse, and that no man can say that Jesus is Lord but by what? The Holy Ghost. Now, there are diversities of gifts but the same Spirit. There are differences of administration but the same Lord. There are diversities of operation but it is the same God which what worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. And so I want to break there. So a manifestation of the Holy Spirit or the gifts of the Spirit. When we come into that place and the Spirit of God start moving, it's going to profit you. It's going to bless you. It's going to empower you to do some things and break some things and destroy some yokes in your life. So, so when we come to that place and we see the Spirit of God manifesting through prophecy, anytime the gifts of the Spirit in operation, we benefit, you know. And so, so, so here today, when we know that and we start looking for the plan and the perfect will of God to come forth in our life, it's just been a great blessing. Verse 8, For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge, by the same Spirit, and to... By the same spirit, it's important. And so it's not three Holy Spirits. It's only what one spirit. And so we, as we understand that, it's only one spirit, but yet still omnipresent, um, all-knowing God. And, and so he can do, he can, he's multitasking millions of things all at the same time because what? He, he is the great and almighty God. And verse 9, to another faith by the same spirit, and to another the gifts of healing by the same spirit, and to another the working of miracles, uh, to the another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues, to another interpretation of tongues. And so I ask you a question. So if God can fill me with the spirit that I pray in tongues, which is one of the gifts of the spirit that's, that's listed here in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, so why shouldn't all the other gifts be allowed to be in the church, glory be to God, or be a uh, manifestation come? Because verse, verse 1 said, now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. And so he said, he told us to desire these gifts, to crave these gifts, to pray and ask God for the gifts to be alive in the church. Glory be to God. And so when we do that, we release our faith in the ability that when we pray that we know that our Heavenly Father has what hurt us. And so when we go to Matthew chapter 6, he's talking about the Lord's Prayer. 
And when we pray in secret, our Father who sees in secret will reward us what openly. And so we see that, 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 that the Lord's Prayer is a very powerful prayer when you go in and you see it. Now you begin to pray from that standpoint of understanding that when we ask God for something, he's not trying to withhold anything from us because we are his seed. We are, the, we are his children. We are the seed of Abraham. And so God wants to empower us to be a blessing to our generation. Because when people are blessed by the gifts and by the power of the Holy Spirit, what's, what, what's, what's the results of it? They want to run toward God. They want to release and give their lives to Christ, glory be to God, that they can live what the abundant life that God what already promised his children. But then I, I begin to ask the question, why is it not given? Why is it so that, we, that some gifts are harder to walk in than others? And, and so that's my prayer to God, that, that the eyes of our understanding will become open, that we can understand how to receive the blessing of God. Salvation and, and receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost, you know, and so so power is in the blessings of the Lord. And so anytime the Lord told me he would profit me and increase me and bless me, glory to God, that means there's power in his word to do exactly what he said. And so my job is to believe what I read, not rationalize it, not try to say what if or and, and not understanding the full measure of what he's trying to relate to the church. And, and, and so when we put that if in there and we disqualify ourselves as being a recipient or, or the receiving the blessing of God, it calls us to stumble and fall. Glory be to God. Does that make sense? And so here today that we know that it's the self same spirit, one spirit. And, and, and so we have so many spirits that's trying to gain access to our lives, but they don't, but they are disembodied spirits. They're not what here legally, so therefore they're trying to gain access to our lives and to all that we have, you know. And so we, we, we disfranchise ourselves. We, we, we push them aside in the mighty name of Jesus. Glory be to God. And so hereby we know that, that we have access with God because it, it's by the Holy Spirit. It's only one. 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 One, one, one. And so here we are. Let me go back to verse 11. But all these work of that one and self same spirit, divided to every man severally as he will. And they call him in the Greek, Allos Paracletus. I, I guess I'm pronouncing that right, you know. And so he's our advocate, he's our helper, he's our standby, he's our intercessor. And, jo and John was said this when, when he had his earthly ministry. He said, there's one standing among you now, shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. So Jesus baptizer is the baptizer in the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit comes to give us utterance and unctions in the Spirit. So when he comes upon us, he comes to what fill this, this temple or this void on the inside. And the Bible said, out of our belly shall for what rivers of living water. And so this process is given by faith when you want Jesus to come into your life and let him be Lord of your life. And as you surrender and as you pray and ask God for his blessing to come into your life, he won't withhold none of these gifts because they're gifts. And, then, and if I have a gift, if I want to give you a gift, it's up to you to receive the gift. See, the gift giver is always given, but, but the person that received the gift, he has option. He can what, choose to receive it or reject it. And so a lot of times, and so sometimes we, we, somebody give us a nice gift, oh, you didn't have to do that. Oh, I, I didn't think I was worthy enough to receive the gift. But, but God's opinion of us is that we are what? We're, 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 we're highly favored. And he, he put us on a pedestal because what? Jesus died and suffered and went through so many things on the cross that we can receive the blessings or the gifts or the power and enter into a rest in this time and season that we live in in our life. And so the Bible said we're not destroyed because of the devil. We're destroyed because of the lack of knowledge and insight into his word, Hosea 4 and 6. And so the time that we spend in this word, understanding and receiving and believing God and trusting him. See, patience means when you got to have patience. You know, I, you know, I didn't really understand patience. Patience is when you're standing on God's word and something is trying to move you off the foundation of his word that you're standing on. You need patience or endurance to keep the same mindset and believe God and trust him through that what pressure time that the enemy is placing on your life to move you off your foundation of faith. And so praying in the spirit strengthen us in these weak moments that we are going through in life. That's why we need to be what filled with the spirit, praying in the Holy Ghost, hallelujah to Jesus, because you know you're in conflict, you're in a spiritual warfare, you're in a spiritual battle, and as God has gifted the church with one of the greatest gifts that we can, if we do not break down, 
if we begin to understand that God has given us a weapon of warfare with our tongue by praying in the Holy Ghost, glory to God. Many people fight us on this thing a bit of the, of the infilling of the baptism of the Holy Ghost, but it's a spiritual weapon. It's a weapon that God has given to the church, but if we don't understand how to use our weapons, we go into battle with, what, with carnal weapons against a spiritual enemy, and we are sometimes defeated, glory be to God. But when we understand that the baptism of the Holy Ghost is, is spiritual, is kingdom, is, is binding by God's word that he gives us a spiritual language, that we have the power to communicate with our Heavenly Father, and we speak in an angelic tongue as well. The Bible says, though we speak with the tongue of men and of angels, angels and have not what charity that's why the enemy knows that if we are the strong man and we have power in the name of Jesus glory be to God oh Lord have mercy glory be to God see because it's by one spirit and so let, let me let me let me break off and talk about the strong man part because this is vitally important to what we understand so God created Adam from the dust of the ground correct all right so he blew his life or his zoe or his life created in the image of God. And God gave him power and dominion over all the works of his hand. So basically you say Adam was the God of this world. Does that make sense? Do you agree with me on that concept? And so here we are now, you know, Satan rebels against God, kicked out of heaven, him and the third of the angel. And so he finds himself in the earth where Adam is what? The strong man or have what? He's the God of this world, Adam. With dominion and power and authority. So Satan has no, he lost his place. So now he subdued the serpent and what gets in the serpent and goes to Eve. But yet still he plotted probably a long time on how he would get what he wanted from Adam. And so here you are, he goes, talks to Eve and, and said, has God said? So he began to put doubt in her mind about what God said because hallelujah, glory be to God. Does that make sense? And so here he is, he tricks her. And Adam is not deceived, but he willfully gives his dominion and power and authority over to Satan. And now Satan becomes the god of what? This world. Glory to God. He becomes the strong man. And so here we are, Adam, strong man first, transferred to Satan. And now Jesus Christ comes. They call him the last Adam. Oh, you don't hear me. Glory be to God. And God fills him with or baptizes him in the spirit of the river of Jordan. And the Holy Spirit comes upon him. And God makes a decree. This is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Hear ye him. And so for a long time as I was a preacher, I thought he was just speaking to the people that were at the baptism. But no, he was speaking to all the creation that he made. And he was telling them, he was telling the rocks, he was telling the wave, the sea, the wind, the fig tree, sickness and disease, Satan and every angel and everything that he ever made, glory be to God. He was telling them and making a decree to them that, that these things that had, that, 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 that they understood the voice of God. And he was saying and making a decree, this is my beloved son and whom I'm well pleased, hear ye him. And so when he made that decree, everything had to obey the creator. Glory be to God. And so we see sickness had to obey. We see demons. We see fig trees. We see everything that physically Jesus spoke to. Physically, hallelujah, glory be to God. Physical things that he spoke to, hallelujah. Human things that he spoke to. Environmental things that he spoke to. Everything that he spoke to. Even death, when he spoke to death, death had to obey him. And so therefore God's decree and God's word was so found, so profound that what all creation had to obey him. And that's why God give us these things, what we call working or flowing in the realm of the spirit. And so much carnality has entered into the church. Hallelujah, glory to God. We need to return back to the foundation that God has said, hallelujah, glory to God. Uh, does that make sense? And so here we are today. We are understanding that the baptism of the Holy Ghost is spiritual. It's a pure language. It's not defiled like our language. It, when you pray in the spirit, it's no, it's no cursing in that language because it's a pure language given by God to his people. So every other earthly language that man has a part in, it has curse word. It has things that you can say that, that's, that's not a pure language, glory to God. So rambo korabaka. And so therefore God's language is given by the spirit. And when we pray in it, it profits me. It blesses me.
But yet and still, sometimes because the mind does not what understand what's going on and it's trying to figure out and trying to understand, so we form an opinion about what God is trying to do in my life, and therefore sometimes it, it, it interferes and hinders the blessings or the flow of God in my life. Does that make sense? And so God is saying in verse 11, going back to 1 Corinthians uh, uh, chapter 12, verse 11, he said, but all these work of that what one and self-same spirit divide into every man severally as he will. So these things are divided unto us by what? The Holy Spirit. And so if the Holy Spirit is, is the one that gives and, and imparts these gifts, so who should I ask? I should ask him about what doing the impossible in my life. And so here we are today, you know, we, we, we just got into a short version of this, of this message, but we're going to have part two, part three, and, and maybe part four going into it. Stay tuned for part two of the infilling of the Holy Ghost and praying in the Spirit with the Emmanuel's Faith Center, and I'm Pastor Wayne Johnson. My name is Pastor Wayne Johnson. Welcome to the sec second segment of our teaching, the infilling of the Holy Ghost and the baptism or praying in the Spirit. And so we're excited today to take you into the, the, the second part of it where we begin to talk about the principles of God's Word, empowering us to do what we can't do. Because when we understand who we are and we know that God is with us, we make a decree on the promises and the prophetic Word that the Holy Spirit is the one that what comes to energize or stir up the gifts of the Spirit. And we talked about in the last segment, we talked about that we are the strong men. And so if you do not understand this principle about being the strong man, so when attacks of the enemy come, you, you'll start looking at yourself as the weaker one rather than what the strong man. And so when we go there and we, we look at Matthew chapter 12, I believe that that's, that's where that comes from, glory be to God. When we look at, at the principles of God's word, that we are the strong men and women of God. And so now the enemy, Satan, Jesus operated on the, the law. And so from Genesis to, to, to John was the law. And after the resurrection, after he rose again, then that's when we, we, we go back when he rose again in 40 days of teaching to the disciples. And he told them to go and tarry to Jerusalem till you be endued with power from on high. And so when Satan found out that we all going to be millions and billions of people being filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, the same spirit that, 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 that rose, that, that pulled Jesus and, and, and rose and, and brought him back to life, hallelujah, when he was in that dead state, glory be to God, that same Holy Spirit now is inside of us, empowering us, giving us the, the, the wisdom, the strength, and the knowledge and the ability to do exactly what Jesus did, Lord, have mercy to Jesus. Do, oh, does that make sense? So when we understand this principle, we got to understand who we are. So now my concept is that if I am less than Satan, well, then, therefore, sometimes my thinking is I cannot overpower someone that's stronger than me. It's like a bully. Most people that bully you, they, are, they think they have strong, they, 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 the contents of their character, it, it, it makes you what feel less than. But Lord, have mercy to Jesus. Let, let me go back, Let me, because I want to lay this down to you. The scripture said, how can you enter into a strong man's house and bind him except you be what stronger than him? I'm paraphrasing, glory to God. And so therefore, Jesus Christ became what? The strong man. Everything that God made obeyed the voice of Jesus Christ. Because, Lord have mercy. Ooh, I feel good today. Lord have mercy. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. And, and so when we go to uh, Matthew chapter 12 and starting at verse 9, as he went into the synagogue, and behold, there was a man which had what, a withered hand. And he asked him, saying, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath days that they might what, accuse him? And he said unto them, What man shall there be among you that have one shepherd, one sheep, and if he fall into a pit on the Sabbath day, will he not lay hold on it and lift it out? How much more then, how much more then is a man better than a sheep? Wherefore, is it lawful to do what well on the Sabbath day? Then said the man, stretch forth thy hand, 
and he stretched it forth, and it was what? Restored whole like unto what? To the other. Then the Pharisees went out and held counsel against him how they might destroy him. But when Jesus knew it, he withdrew himself from thence, and what? A great multitude what followed him, and he healed them all. Now, in this context, later on now, we see where, where, where they, they, uh, they talked about in verse 28. He said, but this is what they said. And uh, let, me go, let me go right here. Let me go to verse 24. But when the Pharisees heard it, they said, this fellow doeth not cast out devils, but by Beelzebub, the prince of devils. And Jesus knew that what thoughts. Now, let me show you something. That's very important when you're reading scripture. He said he knew their thoughts. So whatever thing you are thinking about, whatever thing you let have access in your thought life, it dominates the, 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 the place and the place that you're trying to go in life because your thoughts reveal what, what's really on the inside. Glory be to God. Because the scriptures say, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. So here we are. Jesus knows our thoughts, even the words we're going to say before we even say them. Glory be to God. So this is vitally important when you, when you go there. And he said unto them, every kingdom divided against itself is brought to what? Desolation. So when you become the strong man, and we became the strong man when Jesus rose from the dead on the third day with all power and glory in his hand. Now the things switch. Now the enemy is trying to spoil our house, trying to get us not to see that we are the strong men and women that God has anointed with his spirit and with his power. Glory be to God. We have been restored back to that rightful place when God walked with Adam in the cool of the day. Uh, does that make sense? Do you, feel me? Do, do you begin to understand? Now, when I get that concept and that concept is inside of me, then my, 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 my imagine, my image of myself now turns to what God said rather than what I feel and what I sense. Glory be to God. Does that make sense? Because see, when you're sensing wrong, perception and truth are totally two different things. You can perceive something to be true, and it's not true. See, because most people live from a place of perception. What they think determines where they go in life. Glory be to God. And, and perception can be wrong and not what related to truth with God's word. So when you think that you can't do anything, let, let me break it down like this. Sometimes when Christians say his name, and they make that decree out of their mouth, something from down here rises up and resists that which is coming out of their mouth. And, and I, can, I can give you an illustration if you follow me. If you make this decree right here, you say, I'll never be broke another day in my life. And when you make that decree and you begin to say that out of your mouth, instantly with a lot, with 99% with of the people that say that, you'll feel something from your lower belly or your inner man rise up and resist that word that just came out of your mouth. That's a faith confession. That's what God said. My barrel marrow will never go empty. I'll never be broke another day in my life. God will supply and sustain me in every area of my life. When you make those faith confessions, then that thing comes up and rises up against you to what? Reject what just came out of your mouth. That's your core belief. That's what you really believe. And that's why the word of God tells us to renew our mind. And, and when we renew our mind with the word, it, it, it delinquishes that voice. And that voice no longer rises up against us when we're starting to decree God's word. And therefore, a lot of people, when they say the name and they make a decree about Satan, and, and so therefore that thing rises up inside of them, and, 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 and sometimes they get afraid. But I want to let you know today, God's word is true. you got to settle that in your mind. If it's true and, and the weapon that he's given, in us is, is the sword of the spirit, is the gifts of the spirit, or the Holy Spirit coming to live on the inside of us, manifesting himself through us in a lot of ways by praying in the spirit and delivering and that we speak mysteries unto God, that we are created in the image of God and we walk and we do kingdom blessings and kingdom work. We communicate with a pure language unto God. And therefore, that language of the spirit is given, it's, it's a blessing, it's a gift of God. And so therefore, when my heavenly father has gifted me with some Something, I cherish it with, 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 with unconditional gloves, our hands of gloves, glory be to God, because I understand that he's given me something, and sometimes you can receive something from your father or from our, and you don't even realize the value of what we have, glory to God. And so here we are today, and Jesus is what? Fighting against demonic powers through men, because the scriptures say our battle is not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and rulers of darkness and spiritual wickedness and high places. So now, let's go back to Matthew 12, and let me begin to explain about this what position of authority and dominion that God has given us, and now we are what the strong men. So we talked about earlier, the old covenant is from Genesis to John, right? 
And Jesus operated under the old covenant when he was here. And the New Testament came, what, after he died and rose the third day with all power and glory in his hand. Glory be to God. So therefore, now he came back, 40 days of teaching to the disciples. And after that, they all met 500 brethren. And he said, go and tear in Jerusalem till you be endued with what? Power from on high. Glory be to God. And so here we are. Jesus is setting a principle in his word, and he's showing us something if we can what, see this. And listen to what he said. And they, and they were saying some things about Jesus, and the Bible said he what, knew their thoughts in verse 25. And every kingdom, and said unto them, every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and every city or house divided against itself shall what, not stand. And the Bible says, that's, that's powerful within itself. I'm going to come back to it. And if Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. How then shall his kingdom stand? So we pray the Lord's prayer, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is, is in heaven. So here we are, kingdom principles are coming to the church through by what mysteries are praying in the spirit. So God said, we speak mysteries unto God. I pray with the spirit, I pray with the understanding. I sing with the spirit, I sing with the understanding. So though we speak with the tongue of men and of angels and have not charity, it what profit us nothing. So here we are that we have an opportunity to what see into the kingdom. Lord, have mercy to Jesus. The mysteries of the kingdom are now revealed unto the children of God when we know and go after kingdom blessings and kingdom principles. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That when, when I know who I am in Christ, when I know that God has given me power and authority to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing and no wise shall what hurt or harm us. That's what God said. And so now we, 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 we know that, that, that thou kingdom come, thou will be done on on earth as it is in heaven. Now, hold on. I'm going to show you something. Listen to what it said. And, and verse 26, I read that. And, and verse 27. If I, he said, if I by Beelzebub cast out devils, by whom do your children cast them out? Therefore, they shall be your judges. Verse 28, listen to this. But if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God is come unto you. We pray that Lord's Prayer all the time. Jesus said, if I'm casting out devils by what? The finger of God, the kingdom of God has come unto you. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So we pray that all the time, glory be to God. And listen to verse 29. Or else how can one enter into a, enter into a strongest man's house and spoil his good, except he first bind the strong man, then he will what, spoil his house, glory to God. So we are the people that God called and commissioned us to do. And that's why praying in the spirit is so vitally important. It's a weapon that God has given to the church. So when you go to Ephesians chapter 6, he talks about putting on the whole arm of God. But at the last part, he said, praying always with all prayer in the spirit, you know, petition and supplication unto God, that we speak what mysteries unto God. So when you pray in the spirit, the spirit of God, hallelujah, God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. So, so the gifts of the spirit are the power of the Holy Spirit. This has been the Emmanuel's Faith Center broadcast with Pastor Wayne Johnson. If this broadcast was a blessing to you, we would like for you to partner with us. You can partner with us with the monthly seed of $25. We are located at 9501 Highway 97, Walnut Hill, Florida. For this and other teachings by Pastor Johnson, please visit our website at www.efcenter.org. Tune in next week for another exciting time in the Word of God. And may God continue to richly bless your lives is our prayer. Life Television Network, Chickasaw, Mobile, Pritchard. It's that time of year again. Get ready to be tremendously blessed. The 26th Annual International Gulf Coast Word Convention and Convocation of the International Fellowship of Independent Interdenominational Christian Churches and Ministries will be July 25th through the 27th. This year's theme is God is doing a new thing. 
there's an awesome lineup of speakers. Wednesday, July 25th is Men's Night. The speaker is convention host Dr. Henry W. Roberts II. Thursday, July 26th is Women's Night. The speaker is Dr. R.C. Blakes Jr. Friday, July 27th is Youth and Family Night. The speaker is Dr. Todd Hall Sr. We will also have daily intercessory prayer Wednesday through Friday. Noonday prayer is from 11.30 a.m. to 1 p.m. And nightly prayer is from 6 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. But wait, there's more. Impact sessions will be held on Thursday and Friday starting at 6.30 p.m. each night. Our impact speakers are Bishop Wayne Johnson and Pastor John May. Bishop Johnson will discuss the faith needed to build ministry. Pastor May will talk about developing the faith to redefine your ministry. Mark your calendars and save the dates, July 25th through the 27th. For more information, contact Word of Life's office at 251-456-2652. Looking forward to seeing everyone at this year's convention and convocation. involved in an accident or fall and experiencing pain? We're open four days a week, some days 7.30 to 7.30. Call me at 476-PAIN. One call, that's all, to me, chiropractor Dr. James Gordon of the Alabama Injury and Pain Clinic. The choice is yours. Bam, it's all about change. Stay tuned for a life-changing word. God been talking to us that we need to stick to it. And I know it, uh, most of the time we don't want to hear messages like that because that means we got to make some changes in our life. But one thing I know about to get to a next level and to live victorious, it must be some changes made. Somebody say, I got to make some changes. Don't be looking for who ain't here. God is talking to me and you. He said, it's time for the believers to stick to it. This is a generation that don't stick to nothing. I mean, this generation is so, they wear their sleeves, they fill in on their sheets, and if you say something out of order, they take their ball and their bat and they go home. But I'm here to tell you, God is ready to raise up some disciples. He's ready to raise up warriors. He's ready to raise up victorious people. I didn't come for about five or six of you. I know some of you still think it's a show time, but this ain't Apollo. This is God's time, and God is ready to use me and you. Somebody say, use me, Lord. Hit your name, Max, and say, what do you stick to? And who do you stick to? I'm not going to be able to go over the whole message. That's why we're going to give you a bonus package. Two CDs for $5. Part one and part two. And it's called Stick To It. And any believer that got good, sanctified, common sense need that CD. Need them in your car. Need them in your home. Need them for we can get developed in our spirit spirit man because the enemy is after us to quit he love a quitting believer he love a believer talk one talk in the presence of a great cloud of witnesses and then go home and can't even walk out what you talked about i know it i know it. he loved that we are strong we put on the strong faith when we got a whole lot of people around us but what happened when you're by yourself and i'm by myself do you still say devil get back i'm gonna win i got the victory you ain't gonna have my family you you can't have my marriage. You can't have my finance. It's more than a song. It's called a believer. Stick to itness. One thing I thank God for my mama that's in this great house and my dad if he was here. They taught me how to stick to it. See, most people think you just wake up one morning and you're going to stick to it. Not if you've been around a whole quitting. A whole people don't do nothing but quit. They're going to show you how to 
to quit. They're going to show you how to throw the towel in. They're going to show you to say, I'm out of here. I don't want to fool with that. That's a coward way. Will the real church rise up in power? Will the real church begin to say, devil, you are lying. Jesus is the Messiah. No weapon formed against me. My family shall prosper. And I'm going to stick to it. See, it sounds like you're mad with somebody. I am. I'm mad with the enemy because I see what he do to the believer. He have you throw your marriage away. Then he have you throw your cheering away. Then he have you to throw your education away. Then he have you. And then we go around and get before people and say, everything is, oh, I'm just blessed of the Lord. How you blessed and you done gave away your family? Somebody says, stick to it with your quitting self. I tell pastor, I hate to see a weak man. A weak man make me want to go over and slap them. If anybody ought to stand up, it's a man of God. Telling me to pray. What about you to pray? Daniel was a man when he prayed. He prayed three times a day. Come on now. Somebody say, quit quitting. Go with me. I want to pick up right where we left off with Esther. Somebody say, quit all that quitting. Come on, stick to it. Power is in seeds. Do you hear me? You got to get anointing from somebody that got one that knows how to stick to it. Running around your old crazy friend, and then she ain't stuck to the marriage. She ain't stuck to her education. She ain't stuck to her job. And you talking about anoint me. You need to get back around somebody that got a real anointing that been proven by God. Not only did my mama teach me and my daddy, Jesus taught me how to stick to it. Every little thing didn't trip him up. Every trap they set, it never caused him to end his destiny. He said when he got ready, it was finished. Other than that, he said, 